opportunity for a swing in the championship today. It is enduro time at Sandown, and what a ripping start by Brown. Cam went nowhere. De Pasquale up into second place, and Waters has been swapped on the run to turn one. Kostecki drops into third, and Cam scrambling around the outside, trying to hang on. He got a shocking start, Cam Waters. Trying to regroup here now. He was able to prevail around the outside of Mossad, so they got through there without bumping each other. The rest of the field got through there very cleanly, also. Nice job. So he grabbed the pole position. He's now tipped another box, and that was to get that car cleanly off the line. Will Brown, and he's done it. He's got margin going up the back straight. Cold tires, cold brakes. He's got to get an understanding of what the track's behaving like and what the car feels like early on. It's dried out a little up there now, so that's encouraging and produces more confidence for the driver. Brown, Dick Pasquale, Kostecki, Waters, Mostert, that's our top five. And then it's Heimgart, Nafini, Stanaway, Payne and Golding through the back half of the top ten. Good, for, clean opening lap. It was, and look for Kostecki. Look for Kostecki because he will have a dive at Di Pasquale if he gets an opportunity down here. He didn't get out of the final corner quite well enough and Anton's just able to gap him by about a car length. What a turnaround for Di Pasquale. The first runner in the shootout yesterday. Qualified so well. He's made a great start. And he's in the box seat here and he's got fresh air in front of him with the exception of Will Brown. can turn one and whoever it was actually ran wide look at that that was awkward and it's punched him wide deep Pasquale gets shoved out of the way by Kostecki and that was costly he's gone back three could even be four spots in the process with some early hip and shoulder there we teased the notion early on and just got to make sure now with Anton that it, it doesn't have a wheel alignment issue and a bent steering. Did Anton have a problem through two, three, four to relinquish a little bit of the margin that he had for Brody to get that close? He's had a big dive at him. So that has further let Will Brown off the hook. He's got 1.4 seconds now over Brody Kostecki, newly into second spot. Waters gets to recover here now in third. Most it up into fourth. Then it's Heimgartner in the RJ Batteries entry, the white Camaro, followed then by Anton Di Pasquale, who an eye blink ago was second, and now he's being monstered by Brock Feeney. Oh, we've got trouble here, and it's trouble for Stanaway, I think. And the back of that car, something weird going on as he made contact, as someone tagged him. He stopped, that, and this, Sorry, Sorry. if it stays this way, is very likely to trigger stay, stay there with your stuff a safety stay car with a full course yellow. Until the safety car comes out. This is a weird image. This is definitely safety car time here, and this is going to be chaos. This safety is going to be flags, pretty much car every car in. Yeah, so they'll all take it, I imagine. If not all, then vast majority. And there's been a lot of talk about this. So five, four, three, two. Safety car speed limit is activate. <laughs> Ugly metallic sounds from the back of that car. Racing once more. Totally different complexion, though, with all new names down on the pen side of your screen. Pi leads them from Moffat, from Wincup, from Hazelwood, from Holdsworth, and they are chasing all, all over the road here. I think it's Tanner that's gone all the way down the inside. He was almost on the horse racing track there at one stage, and he slides on by Declan Fraser, and he makes sure that Declan has to go, go the long way around on the exit of Turn 1. Impressive stuff down the main straight there. Good restart for Tanda. And Ended up right alongside the guardrail on the inside and got away with it. And then he was able to escort Declan a little wide coming off turn one, which meant that there was no drama for him to put that position on him and maintain that number. He's up into six there now. But at the same time, he's being shoved along by Todd. <laughs> It's a welcome back to racing for Jamie. Luckily, there's a bit of muscle memory involved. And Hazelwood this time now. has another take at this. And he gets up on the inside of him. And Wincup does not blink and does not let him by. Now it's a drag race all the way up the back here. And there's a bit of side draft involved. And Hazelwood might get the run this time. 
What a great exchange between both of them. A lot of experience, and Wincup now drops in behind, and that puts him back into fourth position. Hazelwood gets on with it. Oh, oh that looks awkward. He's off the road. Well, well, uh, he had a big one up here years ago, and he's just managed to get away with murder up at the end of the back straight. And that was costly. So he pinched the brake. So we are doing... Guys, it's rocking. 11 seconds of space, 11 seconds of space. Oh, so that one, he had a huge one a few years ago up there at turn six. And has it got another problem? He hit the fence. It popped the fence yeah, right okay. front. Oh, I reckon yeah. it might have uh, even got actually punctured flat. that tyre. That has. could have been the reason why it went off to begin with. I, I Honestly, Neil, I reckon that's an, an unforced error. I reckon he's, he's fired in there so deep. And he's made his own. Oh, he, maybe yeah. it did turn right a little bit, didn't yeah, it? Did. Yeah, did. I saw the smoke. Yeah, now, that yeah. could have been from the contact back at turn four. Totally. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So that might have called that wrongly. Uh, definitely turned right when he put his foot on the brake. That just tears the inside wall of the tyre out. And Holdsworth off with a big spin. Massive spin for one of the real contenders. Can he get back out of there with slick tyres? Yes, he does. So that's a, a sigh of relief there for Walkinshaw and Drenny United. Now, did he do that by himself or did he get assisted? So there's Ryan Walkinshaw and Chas Mostert. Here's Tanda in behind him. They come off to Lee runs a little bit wide, but he's done it to himself. Oh, my goodness me. He cut, he's completely spilled it on the exit of one. How he got away with this, it's ripped a bit of the sill panel off. It straddled the curb. Tanda was sitting there watching every millimeter of this. Whoa, he's down in 12th position, lives to fight another day. Oh, and another on it goes, one. and on it goes, and on it goes. And in the wall this time for car number 96, sadly. And it's Jordan Boys from Albury who's paired up with Macaulay Jones. Now, does he get it out of there? Yeah, it's that's there. It's parked. And do we get a reaction here from the race director? Brad Jones is the owner of the team. Tony Woodward closest to camera. And they had done the driver change in there, and Jordan Boys was in safety that car. Safety car boards and flags. Safety now comes the safety flags. car again. But uh, he's dropped back in, said it was a bit rusty early in the weekend, but there's no evidence of that right now. Moffat in behind, just trying to cycle some warmth into those Dunlop tyres from Pye and Tanda. So some seasoned players up the sharp end at the moment, and Tanda arriving down there right on the race line. And Moffat just having to cover a little bit also with Pye. This is awkward, unfortunately, that not pointing in the right direction here for Dylan O'Keefe. That's a brand spanking new car. Okay, man, try and get it moving. Try and get it back to the pits. Come on. Let's try and get it moving. Awkward no, damage well, here the on the front under of the car boat, number mate, 17. Boat, so Kai Allen with huge, huge damage on the front of the Shell V Power no. Racing Team entry. They've just extended that naming rights partnership. So something has gone on, most likely, with those it's couple over, of cars. Mate, pouring water out. It's all over. Lap number 68, and it's game over by the look of it for Kai Allen and for Will Davison. You can big, see big that, damage. You can see that water coming out I of it, the Neil. There, Chad's guys. there. Can't hold the wheel for the boys. Sorry, mate. And Cam Hill's also gone straight back into the pits behind us where Rihanna's standing. So this car has just dropped all its fluid. So it's got a busted radiator. The right rear of this car is hanging off. It's got damage to the exhaust down the left-hand side as well. So this car is going nowhere anytime soon. Be very lucky to see a check the flag today. Race control, attention all teams. Full course yellow, full course yellow. Yeah, that's the whole underside of an under trade sitting in the middle of the road down there. So do we get an understanding from this replay as to what's gone on? So Kai Allen's in car number 17. Dylan O'Keefe's in the Bendix car. And, uh, well, it's just a heck of a mess, isn't it? So they're right up and over each other. Bits of under tray flying off there. And car number 50 was mixed up in the mess. There's debris flying everywhere. And that was Dean Fiore in Jackson Evans' car. This is all bad news for Nick Perkett, who came into the round in sixth position in the championship. Brand spanking new car, that Bendix car. down to the full course yellow here and unfortunately that car's going to take a little bit of recovery here as well so now they're back at 
uh, 80 Ks. And we might get a bit of a clue to answer your question here. I think he's done that on his own down there. Mark's just run it wide. And unfortunately, that's also pretty wet gravel down there. And he's nudged it up against the fence. And that's made things even worse. Yeah, we've seen a lot of cars in there over the weekend, but we haven't seen one stuck yet, have we? Because no. they've been able to drive around the back of it. But the angle that Jackson went off on, he was basically in line to get the car out, but it ended up into that barrier on the right-hand side, so over and out. And this is an opportunity to be able to clear some of the co-drivers out, so wind cups immediately responding and coming in for car number 88, Tander's in. Uh, David Russell is in here as well, so there's going to be a fair reaction. 72 laps remain. We've been racing for just over two hours. Now all the lead drivers getting back on board. We're just waiting on the driver To avoid the double stack, Pi's still out there. See, that's the driver one, right? So that's actually the held that up because they didn't have didn't have enough fuel coverage mm. at that point, did they? No. But he's vulnerable at the moment. He might, I think, have lost the arm wrestle here. And now Matt's side by side with him and uh, should be able to grab third place here. Yeah. Uh, but it's not done until it's absolutely clear and done out the other side, but he's hung on, so nice job. A little bit of a side draft there. It was able to come off the final corner very nicely and then position the car alongside the Monster Mustang. So it's a bit going on in the minors at the moment down here in the bottom half of the top 10 just at present. And just getting a real close eye on the margin but, you know, between Brown and Feeney here as well got trouble written all over it, doesn't it? That was aggressive by Jack LeBrock, wasn't it? It's not normally a passing spot in the way in there, but he fired straight down the inside. So Cam is battling a little bit there now, and Cooper Murray's got to yeah, run. And I reckon that what's going on, yeah, when we were watching him before and watching the back of the car, and it was looking like he was starting to stress, and we're now seeing the full evidence of that. Oh, this is awkward. Ooh. He's going to end up wide down here and two of the paddock, and uh, he's going to have wet muddy greasy tyres down here and he's losing ground hand over fist now unfortunately. So in comes Matt Painter hoping that they might be able to jump up inside the top three ahead of James Golding in this stop. Those are brand new rear tyres going on but the Sport Max Dunlops on the front have been rotated, just waiting on fuel and it'll be good to go. Watch for the jump and also very busy in pit lane so we'd have to wait anyway for this traffic. They are not going to jump the Golding car. No, front they're green not. Green. And, front green and I thought I saw four fresh tyres for Golding and two fresh tyres on the back for Matt Payne. Reed. Uh, like it down there, but we can't hear from him at the moment. Sorry, mate, I'll grab my other microphone. So four new tyres on this car. They're going to put about a little over 60 litres in it. There will be not be a drop of fuel left in this thing at the end of the race. Look at that. Everything went to plan. They did nothing about... We're talking about the vibrational build-up. Just seeing if anyone jumped on anything there. No interest. Thanks for the update there, Larko. Uh, ju just... Uh ducked outside for a quick look as well and uh, there's cloud cover and plenty of it coming for the back end of this race so with fresh tyres and less than full fuel loads uh, we're going to actually see some pretty decent pace out there at the moment sequence going and this is going to be really tight between these guys really tight Winterbottom's actually our race leader and he runs wide down there on a cold tire and did they make contact then did they actually get away with it that was pretty wild and we've got trouble so remember i talked about the unknown x's at the end of this race here's one of them 
Wow. Campaign done. Brody Kostecki just speaking strongly about the prospect of him getting into the top 10. And he's Nearing. going nowhere. Safety car. He's got comms. He's, car he, yeah, well, he can't hear. And yeah. now we've got a safety, safety car. car so. pit limiters activated in 10, 9, All right. Eight, is this going to change the complexion of this race? This is a little four, injection of adrenaline three, that we need for the back two, end. One safety car limiters must be activated. So, so it's the sixth time that we've had either a safety car or a full course yellow intervention. Brody's got no comms and the thing's died at the end of the back straight. And both Red Bulls we're hearing are staying out. Now, this definitely helps Mostert also. 20 laps remaining. Take a little moment to be able to recover this car. What a shame, it's been great pace. Let's see whether we can unpack the story for you here. Let's have a listen. died. How's the speed difference watching them roar on by up there at 265 kilometres an hour and then pain's come in. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah, the biggest cheer from pit lane did come up and be standing in the Walkinshaw in Mostert's garage. You know, he's just put fresh rubber on, going to bring him up the queue. Nicely positioned, or certainly better positioned. Principal down here at Erebus Motorsport, he just said they don't know, he's shrugging shoulders. They've lost telemetry in the garage and the car's died. So, a lot of question marks at the moment. And that's quite the wild card for the Penwright team. They have decided to pit Matt Payne. And they were brand new rear tyres on that car as well. Road in front, new rears for that car on screen right now. Watch out for the 19 on this restart. As the bloke that came to this event, second in the championship, he's down the order, but he is going to have the eyes on. Certainly will, and contact. Cam Waters into the back of Cooper Murray at turn three. Cooper comes back on, and now there's going to be contact again. So, oh, oh and a car in, LeBrock's in the fence at turn four. And safety cars breed safety cars, and this might be another one. LeBrock is solidly in the wall. Right hand front corner damage on that car. Cooper Murray, safety two of the paddock, and out safety comes the safety and car flags. again. It's condensing into a hardcore sprint race, all right. We're going to bunch them all up one more time. Is he going to be able to get out of here? Murray got away with that. Let's have a look. Here we go. The checks are playing for keeps here. Yep, yeah. so it was pain down the inside, hip and shoulder. So there could even be a case. He was a long way alongside him, but that's these are the hard ones for race control to sort out as well. He did a great job to be able to stitch together a start. He's had to survive a whole bunch of full course yellow and safety car interventions, and he's still got control by the barest of margins at the moment. And have a look at Payne putting pressure on Golding. We've been talking up James Golding's chances of getting onto the podium. He's got half a lap, basically, to hold Payne out here. He gets out of turn four. He minimises the wheel spin. He uses a little bit of the exit curve to help with the oversteer. And he's got out of there really nicely. Matt Payne was right behind him on the way into turn one. And he's been able to get a little break to get away enough. So Feeney's given it away there, I think. He's basically said, OK, Will, you've got it. But the drama behind is whether Golden can hang on for the podium. Will Brown used every last millimetre of the exit of Turn 9 on that occasion. And he is now out of the danger zone. He lines it up out of the final corner. He's resisted all of the challenges. And he stitches together career victory number nine at Sandown. And he's fourth of 2024 and extends his championship lead. But what a special breakthrough moment for James Golding, for Peter Gibberis, and for Newlon Racing. Well done, Will. Well done, Brock. And well done, James Golding. And that's a wonderful thing to witness after a huge, huge effort from the men and women inside that team to finally get the breakthrough that they've been working for.